There's a strong feeling of resentment looming over the Scottish capital, particularly today after Westminster outlined just how much power it's prepared to give to Scotland earlier in the week. These are the shots from Edinburgh. Edinburgh is saying it's far short of the last-minute pledges that was made to voters during September's referendum to urge them to reject independence. OK, well, Harry Fear joins me now live in Edinburgh. People are venting their anger there, anger there resplendent with their uh, Scottish flags. And, of course, we're in the kilts behind you too. It looks like you're in the Highlands, but actually, just outside Holly Road, aren't you? I'm outside the Scottish Parliament, Kevin. Several hundred, even thousands are here today, are here to voice Scotland's dream of independence. And their message is to the Westminster Parliament in central London uh, that their campaign for independence is still on and still strong. And campaigners here seek to push back against what they call the Westminster rule. And this is in the context of, of course, disappointment at those official proposals for increased devolution, particularly nationalist members of the Scottish Parliament uh, wanted powers to further adjust uh, welfare and taxation to push back against Westminster's austerity drive. So there is disappointment here today. And joining me now is June Riley, a pro-independence activist. June, many have said that the proposals for improved devolution are generous, as some saying they're akin to even federalisation. So why are so many disappointed here today? Well, let's be honest, they're, they think it's generous. Of course they're going to think it's generous. They're from West Westminster, they'll be ruling us as of now and still as of now. This is just not good enough for Scotland anymore. Scotland are now at the stage where we've had enough of being ruled. We're getting nothing back. We put everything in it and get nothing back. And it's time for Scotland to become an independent country. And it'd be good to see Wales on board as well. Well, certainly the demonstrations over this weekend prove that support for independence is not latent by any means. And over recent weeks, Scotland has seen several pro-independence and nationalist rallies and events. One saw 10,000 in attendance, the largest such rally in Scotland in four decades. And in the political sphere, the Scottish National Party has seen ballooned unprecedented support. Finally, a recent poll found that now, several weeks after the landmark independence referendum in which most voted no to independence, now 52%, the majority, would say yes to independence. And it's not just the 1.6 million yes voters who are disappointed with these devolution plans. Some of the 55% who said no are disappointed. They feel caught out because some of their uh, votes were predicated on what's known as the vow for extensive new devolved powers for the Holyrood Party. Parliament, and they feel that that promise hasn't been kept. It's an ongoing headache for David Cameron keeping a lid on this, isn't it? Yeah, thanks for the update. Well, let's look for a minute then. Um, thanks, Harry. Let's look for a minute at how uh, power is going to be given over by London and, to, and the extent of it as well. Edinburgh is set, therefore, to get full control of income tax as well as being able to uh, keep half of VAT revenue. That is on the cards. Scotland will also get control over its parliamentary elections. It's on the cards, too, such as allowing 16- and 17-year-olds to vote. It'll be also given extra um, borrowing powers. So that's good for the independence people. It may look like a big list of concessions, but Scotland, as we've been hearing, definitely wants more than that. For instance, at the moment, decisions over pensions, corporate tax, the minimum wage, they're all going to remain as the plan stands at the moment moment in London, they're not happy.